So it's been another nightmare week for Rishi Sunak. It emerged his Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, was caught speeding and may have asked a civil servant to try and help her avoid points on her driving licence. He's once again at war with Boris Johnson. Uh, former Prime Minister has been referred to the police over further alleged lockdown breaches. These are over a gathering at Chequers, which has allegedly taken place. And he blamed the, the Cabinet Office for sharing information, basically. But the real problem for, for Rishi Sunak, the... The, the real big deal here is the, the immigration statistics yeah. that have been published today, which show a large rise in net migration, contrary to what the Conservatives promised in their manifesto. Mm-hmm. You wrote today's morning call on um, on the immigration stats. Do you want to take us through yeah, what so they show? 606,000 uh, people have come in net in the year to September 2022. And there's sort of three main groups, I think, and three main reasons that we've seen this massive increase. This is the highest uh, figures that we've, uh, we've got on record. We've got the government's uh, migration scheme, which is basically letting more people in to work in the NHS, social care and those sorts of things. We've also got the more transitory aspect of uh, Ukrainians coming, people fleeing the CCP in Hong Kong. And then we've also got a large number of students, which is partly reflects the fact that many universities nowadays are basically dependent on uh, foreign students coming in and paying higher fees. So many of those aspects are transitory in the fact that they will go down. We're not going to be letting in hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians every year. So we probably would expect that number to fall back next year. But it is, it is highest on record, which is remarkable given that since 2010, the Conservative government have included in every single one of their manifestos the fact that they want to get immigration down. And we've obviously not seen that. I hadn't seen it before I, I came into the podcast today, but I imagine... Um, some Conservatives will be out this morning saying these figures are actually lower than what were predicted by the experts, which is absolutely right. They were expected to be around, what, 700 to 750,000, I think, was the Home Office estimate at one point. They might kind of cling to that, but in, in reality, these are... These, yeah, yeah. these are very, very high net migration figures. Yeah, they but finally I think, got their expectation management right. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks later. <laughs> yeah, definitely fluffing it up at the, at the local elections. But I think it'd be very interesting to see how this row pans out, I think, because I wonder if... Post Brexit, the country might be slightly more liberal, liberal about immigration generally. But I don't know what your view is in terms of just how bad it looks in the eyes of voters on t- in terms of this is breaking a manifesto yeah. promise, ultimately. Yeah, I mean, this is the big question because immigration was the key issue mm. in 2016 during the referendum. And then since then, we have seen the liberal liberalisation of attitudes towards immigration. We've still got around uh, just under half of people do want to see uh, reductions in net migration. But when you ask them, OK, well, which groups of people do you actually want us to cut? Mm-hmm. Uh, they're less clear. Because that sort of reflects the fact that if you go, okay, do you want, do you want to let Ukrainians in? And yeah, yes, of course. Do you want to let these Hong Kongers in who are fleeing a uh, democratic clampdown in Hong Kong? They go, yes. Nurses, yes. Uh, students, yes. So it's a tricky sort of balance when the public polling doesn't suggest that they have a, con- a completely coherent view. And then in terms of the manifestos and the, the government's legitimacy on this issue, I think this is really interesting. We saw this in PMQs yesterday. Starmer, actually, just before he was cut off by the Speaker, he did say that today's uh, migration figures represent uncontrolled migration, which is remarkable because the whole point about Brexit was trying to take back control over migration, leaving uh, free movement and allowing the government to set up their own migration regime. Now, if Starmer's trying to do that and try and frame it in that way, I think he's trying to tap into that that 2016 sentiment, the fact that people are generally more amenable to hire a migration if they feel it is controlled. That's the key point, yeah. I think, isn't it? So it, it's not necessarily that everyone in the country is is against people coming here to work or us importing labour where, it's, where, it, where, where it might be absolutely needed, for example, for the NHS. It's, it's when they feel like decisions are being made and they're not in control of those decisions. So the rhetoric is probably kind of a comfort to, to voters rather than um, a, an absolute clear direction of where they expect every bit of policy policy making to go. I thought PMQs was really, really interesting because you don't see a Labour leader going no. go in, studs up on immigration. It's very like not on brand for the Labour Party as such. But um, they also had quite an interesting policy announcement which happened in, in PMQs, which kind of got into the detail of what some people think is kind of wrong about immigration, I think, in that the Labour Party now wants to um, slash the 20% discount that's available to businesses on 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 some foreign labour. And I think that that what the message that the Labour Party is trying to get across there, I think, is that getting inside that fear that people have that immigration drags down wages and yeah. therefore is making the cost of living crisis worse for people in this in this country. So it's a kind of... The Labour Party putting forward two kinds of messages at the same time. One, that they want very tough controls on immigration, but another that they 
they're kind of comfortable with immigration, but also want to tell voters that they think that it should not affect the cost of living for people in this country, or wages rather, for the people in this country. So it's an interesting mix of messaging, yeah, I thought. I think, yeah, and the two things are compatible. I mean, mm. it's very interesting where that debate has gone. That is something that Richard Tice of Reform has been making, uh, have been saying for a very long time. People uh, have always, you know, on the right, people in UK, people uh, on the right of the Conservative Party have been making this argument for years, and you've not yet seen it in the Labour Party. So I do think it does represent a much more, much harder line from Labour on immigration. I mean, I think Nigel Farage has just said this week that Labour now has the upper hand on migration, so it's in Endorsed by Nigel Farage. Um, I'm not sure whether. Well, I'm not sure. They probably will actually um, like that because it's uh, as a signal of what Labour is trying to do is signal to voters how tough they were willing to be on immigration. But just back to that specific policy announcement. It's, it's very interesting. I remember when Keir Starmer was at the CBI in, back in November mm. and he made a speech that basically outlined this argument. He said to businesses, we're going to use the migration framework uh, to restrict migration unless you invest in homegrown skills unless you say okay we're going to train up uh, local people so we don't have to rely on foreign labor coming in from overseas and then at the time i, I mean it was confusing is this just again more signaling or you're going to get some policy to back it up i remember speaking to people at the time and they were very adamant that this was no this was just the start of mm. uh, labor's move towards uh, a new migration policy and i think you're right we did see that come to fruition in some sense uh, yesterday with the policy announcement there was a little dig from Keir Starmer as well, which kind of just got inside of a, a little bit of the the politics of it. He basically threw back the accusation that, that Rishi Sunak has been throwing at Keir Starmer for the last few months. And it was it was that you've broken your promise. Yeah. <laughs> you've broken your promise on immigration. And that's kind of Keir Starmer breaks, breaks promises is kind of something that you've seen Conservatives throw at him for quite a while now, relating to his leadership pledges, yeah. which, were, which he has very much moved away from since then. I think it's kind of more unacceptable to people generally for a party to break a manifesto pledge when mm. they've been given the chance to govern rather than a leadership pledge that you made when speaking to very much to your own side. And I also think because of some of the promises that Keir Starmer has moved away from, it made it quite difficult for Rishi Sunak to, to throw, oh, Keir Starmer wants to return to, to free movement when the Conservatives at the same time are attacking him for moving away from his leadership pledge yeah. to return the country to having free movement. So there was a, just an interesting little just change of dynamics happening at PMQs as well, I thought. It's, it seems like Keir Starmer's having a good week most weeks now. I think so. I keep writing that. and it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a, so To my surprise, Keir Starmer's had another great week, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos from the New Statesman, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.